warm up today. So what are the parts of the circle that you know without looking? Because <laughs> I've given you the answer there already. All right. So <laughs> we've got here um, a circle. The length around it we call circumference, right? If we've got a line that touches that circle at one and only one point, okay? That line there is what we call the tangent, okay? Um, if we've got a line that um, goes from one point of the circumference to the other without touching the center of the circle, then we call that the chord. The area that's being um, cut by a chord is what we call the segment, okay? And of course, we know our radius there would be that line that would be from the center of the circle to any point of your circumference. And that length of the radius would have to be constant whichever way or whichever point on the circumference that line would land onto, okay? Now, if you've got two radii, right? So that's a plural form for radius. So when you've got two radii there, and that rate, uh, those two radii would make an angle, right? So that's your theta there. Um, this lengthy is what we call the arc. The area is what we call the sector. Look at circumference. So what we're measuring here would be, imagine that you've got a string and you put that around that circle and you unfold that string, that length there is what you call your circumference. So that's what we're measuring, okay? How much string do you need for you to go around that circle, that circumference, okay? Um, diameter as what we said a while ago would be um, a line that goes from one point of the circumference to the other, that touches the center of your circle. If it doesn't touch, it would just be called a chord, okay? What that means is a diameter would be the longest possible line or length that you could find from one point to the other. So what mathematician found out is that there is a relationship between the circumference and the diameter. Um, when we have the circumference, um, that is calculated as pi d. What does pi d mean? I don't understand. What, what do I do with pi d? Where's pi d? Pi d means, as what we learned from algebra, mathematicians don't write the times symbol. Right. So for us to figure out what the length around the circle is, we use the formula pi d. Pi d means pi times d. There's an operation between pi and d. What is pi? Daniel says it's 3.14 times the diameter, 3.14159265353, infinitely many digits of pi. There isn't any pattern. There isn't any repeating number after, okay? And therefore, pi is what we call one of our irrational numbers, right? So a diameter of a circle is twice as long as its radius, that is d equals 2r. Um, therefore, the other way to write the formula for the circumference is 2 pi r. So we've got two working formulas here, depending on what you're given. For us to figure out the circumference of a circle, we can use pi times the diameter, I won't write the time symbol anymore, or if you're given the radius, then it would be two times pi times the radius, okay? Because we know that um, two, uh, two times the radius would give you the diameter, okay? So let's have a look at the um, examples here. What we want to find would be the circumference of these circles, but look, they want you to express your answers into two different ways. One is that it's in terms of pi and the other one to two decimal places. The second one would be quite easier because we know how to round um, decimals, right? But what does it mean when you say in terms of pi? Well, let's have a look at our working formulas here. It says here that when we're given the diameter, 
then we use c equals pi times d, right? This looks like it's the diameter, and therefore we want, um, let's write examples, d equals pi times d, right? And therefore we write pi times now I can write the time symbol because I'll be replacing D with 24, right? But since it says in terms of pi, what it just means is that leave pi alone. What it means, you can just imagine pi as X as a variable, and you can just say it's 24 pi. How silly is that? Yeah, but it's not too silly because what mathematicians want when you write answers, they want an exact answer. This is the exact form, right? So that's the answer in exact form. So that's another way to say that exact form. Okay. Or you could also say in, um, in terms of pi. Okay, in pi form, you can also say that, right? But into two decimal places, then what you need to do is to grab your calculator and press two times. Where is pi um, on your calculator? It would be, would be right, <laughs> right there, the one that says times 10. See that? No? Yeah. But you need to press shift. See how it's got the pi button there on top? So you need to press shift pi. And that's what it should look like on your calculator. 24 times pi. And can someone put on the chat what it's equal to? Yes, Raiden, it's 75.39. Infinitely many digits after that. And we want to two decimal places, and therefore it would be 75.39 or 40. And you can say that's to two decimal places. Let me just make that larger so that you can see it. Yeah. To have the second example there, this time we're given the radius, not the diameter, right? And therefore, Ooh, I didn't get rid of that. Uh, I forgot to get rid of that. Um, we've got C equals, this time we use pi, 2 pi r, right? And now you can write down what it means. And the radius this time is 5, right? So if we are to write it down in exact form, what we will be doing here is remember the... Um, phrase numbers first, then letters. So you can actually have a look at this or think of this as a symbol or a letter. And therefore what you can multiply would be the two and the five, and that gives you 10. Therefore, in terms of pi or in exact form, the circumference must be equal to 10 pi. Okay. And once you have that, for you to write down um, into two decimal places, then that would just be 3.14. No, there's, <laughs> that's why. 31.42 to two decimal places. Okay. See you all, everyone. Have a good day.